Now in this most basic one, uh, let's say it is y is equal to 1 over x, um, it can also be expressed as x times y is equal to 1. Okay, so um, if I multiply it just on both sides, um, that's exactly what I get. x times y is equal to 1. Multiply both sides with an x, that's how I get there. Okay. So what I notice is that when x is equal to 1, then if I multiply y equal to 1, I get 1. So that is one of the points on the line. If x is equal to 2, then y must be equal to a half. So 2 times a half is equal to 1. So that is this point. When x is 2, y is a half. When, when x is a half, y is equal to 2. There we go. And that, you'll see in the end, makes this, this shape. And the same goes for the negative side, because when x is a negative 1, y must be negative 1 so that when I multiply them I get positive 1 okay which means gives me that point oh, not that point that point that point and that point and this gives me the other half of my curve okay now why is it approaching this line why as I come to 0 does it seem like my graph is like freaking out? He's going to infinity, um, to be honest. Okay, so if we look at when we come closer to zero here from, from the positive side, we're getting closer to zero. So at a half, our answer was two. If, and why is it? Because one divided by a half, so I'm write it here, one divided by a half will give me two. One divided by, um, a tenth will give me 10. 1 divided by a thousandth will give me a thousandth. Now do you see the smaller the thing is I'm dividing with the larger my result is and that just makes sense. Okay, It goes into 1 more times and that means that as I get closer and closer and closer the smaller it is the more times it go, goes in uh, but it can never be zero because we can't divide by zero as a matter of fact if it was possible then one divided by zero would be equal to infinity so if I actually get to zero I must get to infinity which obviously is impossible but that's what it's trying to go to and then why is the negative side also going to there but it's going to negative infinity well it's also not too difficult to understand because at negative a half it would be 1 divided by negative a half will be given negative will give me negative 2 1 divided by negative 0 comma 1 will give me negative 10 1 divided by this but as a negative will give me negative that okay so that 1 divided by negative 0 if that was possible but since I'm coming from this side will give me negative infinity and that is why it is tending towards negative infinity. Again, this is utter nonsense. Okay, it's just for illustration purposes. This can never happen. Okay, but still, that's what it seems like it's trying to do. Now, how about this part? Why does it seem to be approaching the x-axis? And it never reaches it. Well, this one you can understand a little bit differently. So, imagine I have a cake. This is my cake. It's supposed to be round, but it came out oval and I divide it into two pieces. If I divide it into two pieces, every person gets a half. So you get a half and you get a half. Divide it between two people. If I divide it between four people, so notice how my denominator is getting larger. Okay, the number at the bottom is getting larger. Now the piece that everyone gets, in other words the result, is smaller. And that will be the case if I go divide it again into let's say eight pieces and I go on and on and on until I eventually divide it among every person on the planet okay seven billion people on the planet which means you are going to get that much okay I don't know even if you're gonna get that much are you gonna get nothing well it can't be nothing because when every person on the planet brings their little crumb that they got I have to get my cake back because when two people 
had each a half, when they bring it together, I have a whole. When four people brought their quarters, I have my whole cake again. So when seven billion people bring their little piece together, in the end I'll have to have the whole cake again. So it can't be nothing. It must be something. So no matter how big the denominator is, the fraction can never be equal to zero. And that just means that as x gets bigger, that's now the number that I'm dividing with, as x gets bigger, my fraction, 1 over x, gets smaller, and that's the y values, but it never gets to 0, no matter how big x becomes. If x eventually becomes infinity, it will be 0, but we'll never get to infinity, so it will never reach that line. And that is why. Okay, Just one last thing about the hyperbola is the symmetry axis. Okay, so if we look at hyperbola, the basic hyperbola, then there's two symmetry axes, in other words, two lines that we can draw um, so that it looks like a reflection. So if I draw here a line, we can clearly see it. If I draw that line, then it's almost like this thing is looking at itself in the mirror. Oh, that's supposed to be a face from the top and it's seeing itself in the mirror. Okay, do you see that? And it looks the same. The other thing I could do is to draw a line here. That will also be a symmetry line. There we go. That's also a symmetry line. This time this side is reflected to give me that side. And here, this side is reflected to give me that side. There we go, two symmetry lines. What are the equations of these symmetry lines? Well, if this is the x-axis and that's the y-axis, then this is the line y is equal to x, and that is the line y is equal to negative x. And here's something very interesting that you can go and have a look at that point, go and see if you can figure out why that is, is the point square root a, comma square root a. What do I mean by square root a? a? Well, that's if I have a over x, that a, the numerator. That's square root a, and obviously this one would be square root of, or negative square root of a, comma negative square root of a. Cool. Enjoy figuring that out. Next we look at a few examples of drawing hyperbolas.